Thanks very much, Ian. Um, for those of you who are curious about my rather striking appearance, uh, I'd say you should see the other fellow. <laughs> um, can I first thank um, Liam for a terrific talk? And I uh, found myself nodding in agreement with, uh, with everything he said. Uh, th there's no doubt that the idea of professionalism, as it was defined and understood uh, when I was training all of those years ago, is very different uh, from the concept uh, of how it's understood now. Uh, but I think the important point uh, is that the notion of professionalism, of what constitutes good medical practice, of what should be in a code of contact, is going to need to continue to change as the community's needs and expectations, as uh, health systems, and as uh, medical knowledge and technology change. We mustn't think uh, that we've got it right now, uh, as opposed to those unthinking clods of half a century ago. The Australian Medical Council recently developed a document that you're probably all fam familiar with, entitled Good Medical Practice, a Code of Conduct for Doctors in Australia, uh, which was then adopted uh, by the Medical Board of Australia. To regard this document as a blueprint for doctors in perpetuity is uh, as wrong-headed as doctors of 2012 uh, perpetuating the conduct uh, of 50 years ago. And of course, Liam, the same goes for the document from the College of Physicians. Another point uh, I'd like to touch on is the increasing intrusion of external regulation into the working lives of doctors. And this is perhaps being seen in somewhat sharper relief in the UK. Uh, than it is here, and again, uh, in part uh, due to a number of medical scandals, and uh, as has been mentioned um, in the UK now, annual appraisal as reality and very shortly revalidation every five years um, will be a reality. Uh, in Australia, I don't think there's any doubt that under the new national law with national registration, uh, there's been a step up in the requirements for annual re-registration. And of course, we've had our medical scandals too. So the question I think that's important, um, and there won't be one set answer, uh, again, uh, correct in perpetuity, is where is the optimal balance between more external regulation as against the professional's own commitment to a code of conduct uh, such as those outlined uh, by the AMC or the College of Physicians in London. And I worry that too great reliance on external regulation will ultimately be to the detriment uh, of the doctor's functioning and the well-being of the patient. And I find myself philosophically um, aligned with um, Honora O'Neill, who is a name I hope is familiar to many of you, who gave those brilliant uh, wreath lectures uh, several years ago over the BBC. And her theme uh, was basically that um, trust has to be strengthened. Uh, you can't rely exclusively on more and more external regulation and that regulation will not prove to be the solution to flawed processes, uh, behaviours and, and poor outcomes. And let me just touch on education, uh, Liam, um, and a new professionalism, um, as envisaged by AMC and the Medical Board of Australia and the College of Physicians. Um, the AMC's educational standards concerning the attributes of graduates uh, that are expected uh, from the medical schools that AMC accredits um, 
there, there are about 40 of them. Uh, and they outline what is expected in terms of knowledge and understanding, skills acquired. And then, uh, importantly, um, the third category is attitudes as they affect professional behavior. And it's this last category uh, which uh, encompasses the qualities which we're now coming to understand as constituting um, the professional of 2012, you know, over and above the knowledge and the skills. And the question is, are these standards being inculcated into the young uh, aspiring medical professional? Um, well, uh, I guess the answer is up to a point, Lord Copper. Um, the, uh, I'm quite encouraged by what's in curricula uh, and the way uh, professionalism is, is being considered. But there is one qualification I have, um, and I'd re really like to see more emphasis on um, attribute number 36 uh, in the AMC's code, which states the following that the graduates should achieve an appreciation of the systems approach to healthcare safety and the need to adopt and practice healthcare that maximizes patient safety. And I think the medical profession in this country uh, has been a bit slow in responding to the patient safety movement. And I am encouraged uh, to learn that the Safety and Quality Commission is to examine the place of patient safety in education and training programs for doctors. So to conclude, I'd emphasize the importance of fostering and sustaining the best attributes of professionalism as we now are coming to understand them. Um, we shouldn't expect external regulation to be an adequate substitute for what might be termed the intrinsic morality of the committed professional. Thanks very much.